Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, using games to learn. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today I want to talk about games you can use to help kids learn and the idea is you can, this is something you can do in the classroom and this is something you can ask kids to do outside the classroom when they have devices. There are different ones for different devices so obviously I'm going to talk about games that will work on the iPads and what I'm saying is you can use these games to learn quite a bit from and I'll talk a little bit about what kind of metacognitive thinking has to go with it so a lot of learning will happen. So let's uh, start with a game uh, that looks at words and we're going to look at letterpress. And letterpress is a word game where you get a board and I have a few open ones just so you can see what it looks like. And, but we'll start a new game. So when you start a new game on letterpress you say do you want to invite a friend if they have friends on uh, the play center they can use friends but you can just be matched with other people and there are two players to every game and what you're trying to do is make words to take control of the board any word any letter sorry that you use to uh, make a word will automatically become yours so I will make words like um, zoo if there's an S you can work with an S so you submit it and it turns blue, the minute it's blue, you've got points, the other side is now starting to work. Now I will show you what a game in process looks like and you can see that now we have a board where we've used most of the letters and the game stops when all of the letters have been used and you can see that there are the dark colors and light colors. The dark colors means these are letters you can't steal from the other side. Your dark letters are ones they can't steal and that's basically if you've blocked them off and they don't have direct access to them. So you've, if it's surrounded by other letters that you, you have used, it's going to turn dark and that is how you gain, slowly gain control over the board. Now where does learning come with this? Well, except the fact that you have to come up with lots of words, which is great practice, one of the things that you recognize very quickly is if you want to make long words, you've got to start thinking about morphology and that is how words are built in the English language. For example, we all know that the ending, ed, comes at the end of words and this is how we make a past tense. So now you, I've got the structure I know I can use with any verb almost ed. So now if I have something like wiped so I can take w, I can take the i, I can take the p and now with the addition if this was the original word I can have a longer word. Now in this case that doesn't really help me but in this game if you make the word wiped the other a player can't make the word wipe. So the shorter word, the root word, is taken out of play. But if you make the root word without the addition, then somebody can make the longer word. So it actually really helps to know how this works. The same thing will happen with an, uh, if you think about the ending ER. Now that's different and again this is about the endings but this works very well also with prefixes so things that come before the word for example re as do again so if I have the word type I can now do retype if I have the re so recognizing different morphological structure in English actually helps you be very successful in this game and the same thing goes out for in in this case we don't have it but if you have tion that gives you the ability to make much longer words so what I'm saying is this is a great way to practice lots of words and be competitive with it but at the same time it adds one more feature and that is if you start talking to the player about using prefixes and suffixes now they're in tune with different features of the English language for example t-i-o-n as an ending uh, or as a suffix, uh, re or in or im as a prefix and that's a great way to think about words. So this is letterpress, there are other games with words that are great uh, 
so you want to search around, but I really like letterpress just for that kind of thinking. And there's another layer to letterpress, and that is the strategy of how do you get control of the board. And sometimes it's better to make smaller words that actually give you an advantage. Uh, but that's another layer that you can uh, talk about. That's a different kind of metacognition. So this is the first game I wanted to talk about. The second game I wanted to talk about is a game we all know and love, and that is Sudoku. And Sudoku is a, a game that is available in paper. What I love about the digital version is you don't have to buy anything. You can get the Sudoku game for free, and then you can have a game open at any point. And in Sudoku, if you don't know how to play, it will tell you how to play. So in the About, it will tell you uh, how you play Sudoku. Sorry, in the Help section, it tells you how to do it on and it gives you all the directions which is always helpful and it also tells you how many errors you can have uh, most of these games allow you to have three errors and then it doesn't count as a successful uh, endeavor you can still finish it it will still tell you that it's true i love the fact that it corrects your errors and tells you why and you can play at different levels flash which is very easy easy medium hard and expert let's try a flash one and I want to abandon my saved game. And you can see that it's almost full, so this is a really good starting point. And this is for strategic thinking, this is for critical thinking for students, and this is for thinking about numbers and how they're organized. And the more students use this, the more successful they will be in thinking through uh, their problems. So Sudoku is great. There are a few apps. I particularly like this one because it's very clear to use, it's very easy. Uh, the next game I want to talk about is actually a trivia game. And I like Quiz Up. Uh, there are other trivia games up there, out there, but I definitely like Quiz Up as a, a great series of games. And you can see that you can choose topics from different things and really focus on what is uh, available. And so you can, for example, take uh, American presidents, you play and you can choose to play with friends. Again, I'm not. I'm choosing to play with whoever uh, I randomly get. And you get points even if you lose. And you can advance through levels even if you lose. But you get, obviously, more points if you win. And right now, we're playing against Lillian, who's also level one. So this is fantastic. And uh, the questions are very limited in time. And they're in real time. Who was the first president to wear contact lenses? That was completely. I guess. And you can see how that is. Um, so you can see how this works. And again, you get green. And the faster you answer, uh, the more points you get. So you go through a full section of uh, six questions. And I'll just finish this game. And you can see that it has pictures, it has interesting questions, and you can choose lots and lots and lots of uh, topics. And your knowledge will really matter. Right now, I'm even mostly because I'm trying to pay attention to the camera and to you. I'm usually much, much better. I'll just finish that last one. The bonus round gives you double points. And so if you win, you can see you get the celebration win. And you can do a mis uh, rematch. And you can see how you get points. And you work through levels. And it will keep on giving you levels. And it also gives you, and the, I love this, it gives you the details of how well you were doing against the other person, but it also gives you a question by question analysis so you can see what you answered and what was the right answer. And you can go through all of your responses. There are rankings uh, with the people that you're connected to. So if your whole classroom is connected to a quiz up, they can practice. But also uh, you can go global 
uh, statewide, etc. And there are lots and lots of topics. So these are my topics, but if you go to the full list of topics, you can see that there's lots of them. And uh, students can choose the topics they're interested in. What I love about QuizUp, beside the fact that you develop some uh, just general knowledge in areas you're interested is that sense of expertise. The more you practice in an area, the more questions you see, the more things you learn and the better you get. And that sense of a competency, that sense of there's an area, there's a subject I know a lot about is really an important thing. And you get the feedback from all of the measures. So this is a great game. Again, this is a trivia. This is not something I would necessarily recommend of doing a lot in the classroom, but it's definitely a way to encourage your students to learn new things outside of the classroom, to gain expertise and to play in a way that, that does have some learning benefits. Uh, so this is a great way to think about that. Um, last thing I want to talk about, and I'm not going to talk about this extensively, mainly because my kids know a lot more about this than I do. Minecraft is a great game. It's a great game on uh, the iPad. It's a much better game on a computer and or a different gaming console. <laughs> Uh, on the iPad, it's a, a very limited game, which is both great and, and sad. Uh, it's sad because there's a point where uh, kids can't do as much as they can on the computer. The advantage is it's a very limited world, which means it's a very good starting point for Minecraft. In Minecraft, you go around, you mine certain materials, and if you mine them, then you get enough materials to build. So you can see some of the things that are built around here and I'm trying to walk while I'm uh, going. And one of the things I love about Minecraft is the fact that it's a very basic game from, a, a, from the perspective of graphics, yet it has captured so many people and uh, their attention and what they want to do with it. So it's a great way to think about space, 3D thinking, about building, about creating resources and accumulating resources. And kids, at least my kids and kids that I've seen around both in schools and out of schools, find Minecraft incredibly captivating because you can create so much, then you can play with others, you can share that space with others. Uh, on the iPads, they have to be on the same network and close to you. Uh, on computers, it's a much more open thing. And if you're interested in uh, Minecraft, definitely go out there and find out a lot more about it. We'll, one of these days, we'll do a special show about Minecraft. But this is just an entry point to a world of creating and imagining uh, more than almost any other game out there. So today on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about some games that we can use or we can send kids to to create learning. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.